What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie. Today, Parker's sitting on the kitchen table where she knows she shouldn't be watching my neighbors plant gardens, which is something I hate to do. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what is today's video going to be about? Today's video is going to be about what I look for when buying ink. Um, most people know that I actually started this hobby because of ink. I mean, I started the hobby by total accident uh, in the sense that I bought a Pilot Metropolitan off of Amazon um, so I didn't have to pay for shipping before Prime existed. Well, at least before I got Prime. Um, and what kept me in the hobby was buying ink uh, because I thought it was so cool that you could fill your own pen with whatever you wanted. Well fountain pen ink, but like whatever colors and stuff you wanted. And uh, I was down for it. So I still to this day, many, many years into the hobby, uh, prefer to get ink samples um, because I change my ink colors all the time. And this way I can do whatever I want. So uh, I filmed a video actually just, <laughs> just before this um, filming of what I look for when buying a fountain pen. That one was pretty highly requested. And this one I thought would just be kind of like a nice bonus, you know, a little, little cherry on top. Um, <laughs> because I actually think more about buying inks, I think, than I do pens, um, which is hilarious. Because if I'm gonna buy ink, I, for whatever reason, like to sit on the colors. I like to look for reviews um, of other people ink, like doing ink reviews and stuff like that. Whereas with pens, I pretty much know almost with certainty whether or not I'm gonna like it. Whereas inks, you never know because it's so hard to find color accurate um, stuff, uh, which is also why I don't really do them because it is incredibly difficult to make things color accurate um, without spending a very, very, very large amount of time um, to do so. And I don't have that desire. So um, uh, if I'm buying just a sample, I don't put too much thought. What I'll do is I'll go to like somebody's website, wherever, whatever company I'm buying from, whether that's like Wonder Pens, um, you know, Goulet Pens. Uh, sometimes I'll buy from Van Ness occasionally. Sometimes I'll buy from Gold Spot, um, Pen Shelley, just a whole bunch of different places. Uh, that do ink samples. And yes, I understand that they're not as economical when you go down to like the milliliter to buy samples than it is to buy the entire bottle. Um, but this way you could get like 10 different colors for the price of a bottle, depending on which bottle, of course, you're looking at. Um, so I like that um, because I change my inks all of the time. Um, so I really like ink samples. And when I'm looking at colors, I typically go for warmer tone colors, um, specifically like, you know, like typical like fall colors. Um, I really like those like rich colors. Um, if I am stepping outside of that, then I'll go for like really deep blues, um, really deep purples. Um, Occasionally I'll spice it up and throw in like a green or a red or something like that. But um, typically those are in addition. If I'm going to get a ink with shimmer or sh like stuff like that, um, then I only get sample because I don't really like shimmering inks all that much. Um, occasionally I'll want to use one, but it's fairly rare because it's just too much hassle. Um, most of the time, unless you're using a dip pen or a like double broad nib or something, it just doesn't look the way that I want it to in regular writing. And it's just, eh, whatever. It's a pain to clean. You gotta constantly shake the pen around and just, it's not worth my time for the most part. So occasionally I will get one and then I will um, just get a sample. If I'm looking at a bottle of ink, then unless it's like super limited edition, then I will buy a sample first, decide if I like it, and then buy a bottle, which is pretty rare. Um, a time where I did not do that, which benefited for me, um, was the Mont Blanc James Purdy and Sun Single Malt, which is my favorite ink of all time. And I've actually bought two bottles, and of course it figures it's heck expensive. Um, but 
<laughs> but I just knew based on the color and some of the research I had done that it was going to be um, a color right up my alley. And it is. I'm almost uh, about halfway done the first bottle that I bought. And I have a backup bottle because I don't know when or if it will go away. I know it will eventually. So I just wanted to have a spare in case because it's my favorite and I love it. <sighs> and I don't want it to go away. <laughs> um, if I'm going to buy a bottle, I have to really, really love the color. I have to see myself using it time and time again. And I have to like the bottle. Um, some of the bottles, like the Robert Oster bottles, they're fine, but like, they're not, they're not nice. They're just fine. They're, they're practical, you know, but like, meh, whatever. Um, I tend to be drawn a little bit more to more ornate style bottles. Um, so something like the Mont Blanc bottles, not their regular line, the shoehorn one, like that one's like kind of whatever, but I like their square ones with like the rivets around it. Um, they feel really solid. I love the Pilot Hiroshi Zuku line bottles. Um, I do like the Caran d'Ache bottles with like the tilted um, slant. Uh, I, I like the Twiz, or not Twizzy, uh, Lamy bottles, the little flying saucer looking ones. Um, they're Definitely interesting, but for whatever reason, I just, I find myself attracted to them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like for me, like I like an interesting looking bottle because you're going to have that ink forever. <laughs> um, so it's really nice to be able to look at something that you appreciate aesthetically, but then you also uh, appreciate obviously using the ink. Um, like if, you know, just because it comes in a beautiful bottle, obviously if you don't like the ink, you're not going to use it. So there's no point. Um, so there's gotta be a little bit of give and take there, but you know, you do also then pay for that bottle. So for example, Noodler's bottles, you get, you know, three ounces of ink, um, which doesn't cost very much because there's nothing really into the bottle itself. Um, whereas with a Pilot Eero Shizuku, for sure, you're definitely paying much more for the bottle than you are for the ink, um, or at least just as much. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the ink. Um, so it does pay a factor, but for me, because I buy bottles rarely, I'm more willing to invest money into the bottle than I am uh, you know, if I were to buy it like all the time, um, because I, like I said, I, I primarily buy samples. Um, I want something that has something to offer. So because I've been in this for so long, um, you know, just base mute colors don't draw me anymore. I dislike pretty much all black inks, pretty much all basic ballpoint blue colored inks. I don't like, I don't really like many reds. Um, because I mean, I've been using those colors forever. I think that's why I'm attracted to like the warmer uh, fall autumn type colors because you never had pens with that. Um, and I tend to like those also because usually they're easier to clean out versus like a red or a purple. Oh my God, purples take forever to clean. Um, I don't really like shimmer because again, it's too high maintenance. I love, I love, I love, I love sheen. Um, but sheen can be a pain in the butt. Um, if it's like a super, super high intense saturated sheen. So I haven't tried the KWZ sheen machines yet. I do have samples of both. Um, but something like, um, the Waldo Emerson inks and stuff like that, they're crazy sheening. They're beautiful color inks, but man, they are a pain in the turkis to clean, um, because they have so much sheen and it takes forever to get it out. Um, but it's fascinating on the paper, um, especially on Tomoe River paper, which I have become a bit of a snob at. So I really, really appreciate that. <clears throat> That's good. <laughs> it's peach flavored Perrier water. Um, the lemon's my favorite in case you're curious. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so there's a couple things I, I, I for sure look into. Um, I have way too many samples, way too many samples. I buy ink all the time. I'm always looking on like out for ink, um, especially around my birthday, which is in January. A lot of places will offer like free ink samples, bonuses, things like that. Um, so 
Um, I do that quite often. If I'm gonna order from the States, um, like a pen, I will always throw in a few samples because you can get ink over there that I can't get here as easily. And I will never place an order from the States just for ink samples because it's just a waste of money because shipping is high, um, import fees are high, things like that. So conversion rates are high. So I will only buy a bunch of ink samples when I buy a pen. So I usually always have some. Uh, if you've watched any of my unboxings that I've posted on this video or on this channel, um, you'll see that pretty much all my unboxings include ink samples, sometimes, you know, in the double digits, sometimes not, um, but there'll pretty much always be ink. Um, so yeah, that's generally basically what I look for. Um, Non-shimmering, if it's limited edition, I hate it when it's limited edition and I can't buy a, um, a sample uh, because I don't want to buy a whole bottle, but I, I understand that. Um, so basically I look for something that is going to be relatively easy-ish to clean and most inks are. Um, I don't want it to sheen. I want it to have some sort of interesting property that isn't just a flat color. Um, occasionally I'll buy them, but for the most part, that's what I want. Um, I want it to have a sample and if I'm going to buy a bottle, I want it to be a beautiful innate bottle. Um, still has to be usable for the most part, but I want it to look glorious because if I'm going to buy a bottle, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing as well as the ink itself. I am okay sacrificing a little bit of functionality in an ink bottle because you can get a syringe, you can whatever, but I want it to be beautiful. And <laughs> my pen stand just collapsed. <laughs> Okay, well, then I'm going to take that as a sign to wrap this up. It is 12 minutes long, so if you're still with the flow of the video, thank you very much. I appreciate you. You are the reason why I make this video. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more every Monday and Friday and the occasional Q&A on Tuesday. Let me know in the comment section down below what you look for when buying um, fountain pen ink, whether it's samples, bottles, whatever, let me know. And as always, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.